A very good evening and welcome to the national broadcast. I'm Malsha Dharmavadana. A very good evening to you. I am Dishan Virakun and here are your headlines for tonight. Former Minister Patali Champika Ranavaka has been arrested. A program to create 100,000 jobs to minimize poverty will commence on the 15th of next month. The World Bank provides a loan of 25 million US dollars to Sri Lanka. Sajid Premadasa says he has no expectations of prime ministerial candidature without having party leadership. Venerable Aturliya Ratanathera says that the government should take over the Batikla University without delay. The Australian continent is facing the most severe warm weather condition in history. Now moving on into those and other stories in detail. Former Minister Patali Champika Ranavakar has been arrested. Now he was taken into custody on instructions given to the senior DIG in charge of Colombo Division by the Attorney General. <laughs> The arrest has taken place at the Bataramula Jayantipura residence of the former minister. Our correspondent has established the fact that Patali Chapik Ranavaka was brought to the Colombo Crime Investigation Division. He was arrested in connection with a motor accident in Rajagiri on the 28th of Je February 2016. The parliamentarian was accused of charges of causing serious injuries to a person by driving a motor vehicle in a negligent manner as well as conspiring to change the driver. Coordinating Office of the Attorney General, Attorney at Law Nishar Raja Ratna, told the national television Patali Champika Ranaka was taken into custody based on these charges. A youth of Gotagama Homa Agama, Sandeepa Sampath, was grievously injured in the accident. The program to generate 1,000 employment opportunities with the objective of minimizing poverty will commence on the 15th of January. A special feature of the program is the provision of a job with a salary of 35,000 rupees to the poor persons without skills in the relevant area itself. A multitask development force is to be established accordingly to the vision of prosperity policy statement for the implementation of the program. A preliminary discussion in this connection was held at the President's office this morning under the leadership of the President Gotabe Rajapaksha. The aim of the multitask force is to uplift the ex extremely poor people who are entitled to Samurthi relief as well as those who are not receiving Samurthi benefit. A group of between 300 to 350 persons are to be recruited for the program from every divisional secretariat division. They will be assigned for vacancies in schools, hospitals and other state institutions for jobs which does not require a specific educational level. It has also been decided to deploy such persons in service after the period of training in fields such as carpentry, agriculture, fisheries and forest conservation. Recruiting and training will be conducted through supervision of the Ministry of Defence and three armed forces. A further 30,000 jobs are to be generated for the management and operational tasks of the program. Job opportunities will also become available to around 10,000 graduates in the capacity of supervision under the management and field levels. The President said that the most suitable person should be appointed to the appropriate job. He further said that if a relevant, rather a relative or any other unsuitable person was appointed, the whole process would collapse. The President further said that they are looking forward to give jobs to the lower stratum of the society. The strategy of the program is extremely important. The appropriate job aspirants have been selected from the village itself and not from outside of the village. The recruits should be able to go to their workplace from their homes in the village. Those who will be recruited for new jobs would no longer have a need to rely on some of the relief. The president added that in such a situation, they would be able to select another person as a Samudhi beneficiary. 
Meanwhile, the Chinese ambassador and the Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka have called on Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha at the Temple Trees today. Chinese ambassador Shen Zhishuan has met the Prime Minister this morning. Opinions have been exchanged at the meeting regarding investments in Sri Lanka currently taking place. Attention has especially been focused on programs scheduled to be conducted next year. A meeting between the Indian High Commissioner Taranjit Singh Sandhu and the Prime Minister has also taken place. At the meeting, attention has been focused on several issues, including the Sri Lankan President's Indian visit. Meanwhile, the Japan Sri Lanka Friendship Foundation has donated an ambulance to the Sri Lanka Air Force today. Relevant documents in this connection were handed over to Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha. The value of the ambulance is 35 million rupees. Parliamentarian Buddhika Patirana and President of the Japan Sri Lanka Friendship Foundation Dr. Lal Tilakratna and others have also graced the occasion. The Association of Lawyers of the UNP says that Ranil Vikramasinghe should hold the leadership of the party for another three years. They have expressed the opinion in this regard at a meeting in Sirikota today. Parliamentarian Ranil Vikramasinghe has also expressed his opinion. Parliamentarian Ranil Vikramasinghe said that the presidential election results have indicated a drawback. However, he added that they should not be discouraged and that they will have to get together and work towards progress. He added that if they remain divided, they will not be able to go forward. Ranil Vikramasinghe also said that the general election may take place by the end of April. Therefore, they should complete their work by the end of February. The party had to be recognized and the opinion of all will have to be obtained. He also said that Sajid Premadasa would get along with all as the party leader. He added that party members in the country will have to be enlightened in this regard. Now, Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa, says that he has no expectations of becoming the Prime Ministerial candidate if party leadership is not given to him. He has expressed his opinions in this connection at a meeting to express his thanks to those who voted for him. <laughs> Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa, said that he does not wish to get entangled in any post in any manner. He added that he has no intention to follow a political path cantered on portfolios. Sajid Premadasa further said that he has come to know through numerous media that he is to be given the Prime Ministerial candidate post at the forthcoming general election. He added that he holds the opinion that he will be present for the polls with party leadership. He also said that he had entered the presidential election in an extremely unauspicious environment. Sajid Premadasa also said that he had presented himself for the election acceding the intense request of the people and disregarding politics based on conditions. He has stressed that he has no intention to become Prime Minister candidate without having party leadership. The World Bank has approved a 25 million US dollar loan for Sri Lanka to improve the transparency and efficiency of core government and public financial management functions. A statement issued by the World Bank yesterday said that this public sector efficiency strengthening project will help strengthen the institutional capacity of the Ministry of Finance to improve efficiency and deliver better service. It also said that the use of information technology and greater human resource capacities will be the key drivers of this five-year project. The European Union will be a partner in the PSEP with a technical assistance grant of 10 million euros to help strengthen core public finance and accountability in institutions. Now the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations has launched a pioneering initiative titled Global Action for Fall Army Worm Control. The program aims to mobilize 500 million US dollars over the period 2020 to 2022 to take radical direct and coordinated measures to fight fall army worm at a global level. Fall armyworm is an invasive moth originating in the Americas. It prefers to eat maize but also feeds on 80 or more other crops including rice, sorghum, millet, sugar, cane and vegetable crops as well as cotton. According to a FAO 
News release, in Sri Lanka, the organization is providing funding and technical assistance to the Department of Agriculture to fill the technical gap in the fall army worm control measures. This pest was identified in India, in Karnataka state, in the month of May 2018. Since then, it started appearing in many places. This current season, this pest is found in thousands and thousands of acres of maize crop in South India. Has a life cycle of A permanent three-member panel of the High Court has ordered today to examine the case pertaining to the abduction and disappearance of media person Pragit Eknaligoda from the 20th of February next year. The case was convened before the three-member panel of High Court judges comprising Justices Sampat Abekun, Sampat Vijayaratna and Gihan Kulatunga, State Deputy Solicitor General Sudarshan de Silva, appearing on behalf of the Attorney General, had submitted to the courts data reports relating to 10 telephone numbers named as evidence of the case. He also told the judiciary that measures will be taken to furnish additional details regarding data before the 20th of next month. Accordingly, the three-member panel of the High Court judges have ordered the Deputy Solicitor General to file data relating to all telephone prior to this date. The judges have also stated that the relevant data will be provided to the parties of the accused. It has also been decided to commence examination of evidence on the 20th of February upon consideration of all facts present today. The three member of panel of judges have also ordered to reconvene the case on the 20th of January in order to determine whether all requirements were completed for the commencement of the case. Directors of the Anti-Fraud Bureau, Namal Kumara, who had been arrested in connection with the disturbing incident in Hettipola after the Easter Sunday terror attack was ordered to be further detained till the 26th of this month. The order was issued when the suspect was produced before the Hettipola Magistrate Court today. The case was examined today by the Hettipola Magistrate, S.F. Murphy. The suspect had been detained for a period of exceeding seven months under the Terrorism Prevention Act and was interrogated by the Criminal Investigation Department. Meanwhile, the courts have also ordered today to further detain till the 31st of this month Tawheed Ahmadu Muhammadu Arshad on charges of propagating the fact that the Easter Sunday terror attack was conducted by the ISIS organization. The detention extension order was delivered by the court magistrate Ranga Disanayaka when the suspect was produced before the court. He has also been questioned by the CID on the detention order. The police have informed the court that the suspect have maintained the contacts with the IS member. It has also been established through the investigations that the suspect, Tawheed, had attended sermons in mosque on Fridays with Saharan Hashim, who was alleged to have been a leader of the National Tawheed Jamaat organization. The magistrate has ordered the relevant section to present a progress report on the investigation to the judiciary on the 31st of this month. Now, parliamentarian Venerable Aturalia Ratana Thera reiterates that the Batiklo University should be taken over by the government at the earliest convenience. The Venerable Thera made, a, made these remarks rather when he arrived at the Criminal Investigation Department to inquire into a complaint made by him in this connection. Venerable Atrulia Ratana Thera had complained to the Financial Crimes Investigation Division several months earlier that land in which the Batikla University was constructed had been taken over by MLAM Hezbollah from the government through fraudulent means. Accusations. Uh, have been launched regarding his bulla receiving millions of rupees from abroad for the construction of the university. Western Province Governor Specialist uh, Physician Dr. Sita Arambepola says that a suitable program has been implemented to eradicate dengue disease from the Western Province. The program is to be conducted unabated through mediation of several institutions. The team of the National Television News Division has also left to investigate the activities today. 
The dengue epidemic has spread through the island. The highest number of patients has reported from the western province, which is 44.3% of the total victims, according to the latest reports of the Infectious Disease Institute. Several institutes, including the Colombo Municipal Council, are extending active support to eliminate the menace. A group of officials have inspected possible dengue mosquito breeding locations in six municipal council divisions. Accordingly, search operations were conducted in areas including Maligavatta, RP Vatta and Apple Vatta. Lava scientists in the very Mihindukula Surya has established the fact that dengue mosquito was found in several places that have come under examinations. The SLRC camera scenes have shown in this manner the probable mosquito breeding places among the partially removed houses in Appalwatta belonging to the Urban Development Authority. Colombo Central Medical Officers of the Health, Dr. Dammika Adhikari Vattage, had informed the UDA to completely dismantle and remove all houses in the area. The inspection teams have been able to identify several vulnerable areas Programs to clean the relevant areas are underway. Now, President Gotabe Rajapaksha has appointed Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage to the post of Additional Secretary to the President for Foreign Relations. He served the Sri Lanka Navy for a period of 36 years and retired as the Commander of the Navy on the 1st of July 2014. Admiral has represented the Pathfinder Foundation and Sri Lanka in many bilateral, regional and international fora, presenting papers, participating in panel discussions and chairing sessions on international politics, strategic and maritime security related fields. Admiral Professor Golombagay holds a PhD from General Sir John Kotalawal University, Masters of Science in Defence and Strategic Studies from Madras University and Master of Arts in International Studies from King's College, London. A ceremony to felicitate Mrs. Caroline Jury, who won the 2019 Miss World Crown, was held at the Colombo Municipal Council today. The event has been organized under the leadership of the Mayor of the Colombo, Rosie Sena Naika, who has won the Miss World Crown 35 years ago. <laughs> So I congratulate Caroline, and I also would urge parents, you know, perhaps religious clergy, the society at large, to um, train people, train the younger generation to be empathetic towards human beings, to have humanity, and to love and cherish what we are blessed with, our neighbors, the people of this nation. And that's the most important thing in life more than anything else. Because we are women, we are doing so much of hard work. We take care of family, we take care of a baby, we run our entire family, and we make sure our husband is okay, the baby is okay, and we are representing our country. So it's a huge job, it's not very easy. As Madam Rosa Sena Naika said, when there was people were sending me bad comments, what I realized in myself that I know People like, the, we cannot satisfy everyone. So there are people good and bad. As long as my husband knows what I'm doing and if my husband is happy, so I will keep on going my journey. So that makes me very strong in my life. So I just want to tell to everyone that we women, we should be very proud that we are women to the world. And we, we, have, we are so blessed to have this kind of opportunity. So please help us and don't disrespect women so we are the light to the family. So I just want to say thank you very much to Madam Rosie Sena Naika for giving me this opportunity to share this message. Thank you so much. Let's begin. We move in for a short commercial break. We'll be back with more local stories. Do stay with us. Traders at the Capitipola Economic Center says that vegetable prices are rapidly increasing these days. 
They point out that the heavy rainfall in Valimada and Uwaparanagama areas have contributed to this situation. The farmers have been placed in a difficult situation due to damages to their crops as a result of inclement weather condition. The farmers point out that they are unable to meet the demand for vegetables. Meanwhile, a prison guard was killed when a van carrying prison inmates met with a road accident. The police says that an inmate and two other prison officials were severely wounded in the incident. The accident took place in Digam Patana in Sigiriya at dawn today. The vehicle was heading towards the Hinguraguda magistrate courts from the Pallikali prison when it went off the road and hit a tree. It is believed that the accident may have occurred due to the driver falling asleep or the skidding of the vehicle. The victim of the incident was prison officer Udaya Kumar Ekanayaka assigned to duties at the Pallikali prison. The injured have been admitted to the Dambulla base hospital. Now, town beautification and maintenance activities have been speeded up on the instructions of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha. The program has been implemented under the supervision of the Urban Development Authority. It has been pointed out that many shops in the Colombo Fort floating market complex were compelled to be closed down due to improper maintenance at the premises during the past four and a half years. A strong odour has emanated due to water pollution. A sum of 312 million rupees had been spent on the construction of the trade complex comprising of 103 shops. The army and the navy were in charge of construction. The floating market had been a source of strong attraction, attraction among local and foreign communities. It has been decided to deploy the Sri Lanka Army for security at the market premises. The Ministry of Urban Development, Water Supply and Housing Facilities say that measures are underway to restore the condition of the floating market complex, which provides recreational facilities to the general public and contributes to the attractive surroundings of the city. Brigadier Chandana Vikramasinghe of Gajaba Regiment has assumed duties as the 17th Director of the Media Come, new military spokesman at the Army Headquarters in Sri Jawadhanapura yesterday. Amid period chanting by the Mahasangha, the new Director Media has assumed duties after leaving his signature for an official document. Brigadier Chandana Vikramasinghe, prior to the appointment, was in South Korea to read for the National Defence University course. During his army career for more than 30 years, he was enlisted to Sri Lanka Army Regular Force in 1989 and held a number of commercial and staff appointments. The outgoing Director General Media Major General Sumit Atapattu, Media Advisor Sisira Vijay Singh and other officers were present at the ceremony. Taking a look at your stock update, the All Share Price Index closed at 6,059.09 points, dropped by 3.24 points, and the S&P SL20 Index closed at 2,953.10 points, also increased by 7.81 points at the end of the trading in Columbus Stock Exchange today. Turnover was over 224 million rupees. Here is a summary of the market details of the Columbus Stock Exchange today. A quick check on the weather before we go. Met Department says that showery conditions over the island, particularly in north, eastern and Uwa provinces and in Polon Narva district, is expected to enhance further. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in northern, eastern, north central, Uwa and central provinces and in Hambantota districts. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere after 2 p.m. Light showers may occur in western and northwestern provinces in the morning too. Heavy falls about 100 to 150 millimeters are likely at some places in eastern and Uwa provinces and in Nuwarelia, Matale, Polonnaruwa and Mulati districts. And that is a wrap of tonight's primetime news. Until we meet again next time, do take care and good night. Good night.